Cool. All right. Uh, hi again, everyone. Um, I'm Sean still. Um, and this is, is going to be really quick and it'll get us back on schedule, I promise. We'll have a break. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the work that's happened inside of Red Hat on the on the RHEL docs um, to make them consumable and useful uh, for CentOS. And most of this work has happened by kind of a, a skunk works group inside of the Red Hat content services. Um, I've attended meetings and that's about it. So I don't want to like take credit for other people's good work. So uh, the background on it is that we don't have a whole lot of really usage docs uh, for CentOS. Uh, you know, we have we have a contributor's guide. Um, we do have some installation docs, although um, some of that's outdated or for, or for seven or for eight and not a lot has gone into nine. Um, RHEL has a ton of docs. Not all of it's necessarily useful for us, but you know, if you go look at the, the actual RHEL um, documentation on the, um, on the documentation portal, there's, there's a whole lot of it there. Um, and they are all open source. They're under uh, Creative Commons, share alike. Um, and we could scrape them. We could have scraped them all along. That's a very unpleasant process. Um, I know uh, I used to do it to make the overt docs uh, from the rev docs. Scraping is very unpleasant. Um, so, you know, the better thing to do is to be able to just work in the open on these things. Um, and so what's happened is um, a group of people in Red Hat Content Services has actually put a lot of work into um, moving this documentation, the sources for this documentation, which is all ASCII doc files, um, into an open source repository, a, a, an upstream repository on GitLab um, where we can do stuff with it. And they've put in some work into um, making it consumable uh, as, to be CentOS docs instead of just uh, Red Hat docs. Um, and so the sources are available on GitLab, the, the URLs there, um, and there's some test builds up for it. Um, and I'll show, this is the, the GitLab, it looks like a GitLab page, but you can see it has stuff in it. Um, and this is a rendering of, you know, one of the pages of the documentation. Um, and it's a very, like, it hasn't been like super themed with a lot of, you know, CentOS kind of branding. Um, it's a very plain, it's basically your, your basic ASCII doctor output, um, but it's there uh, and it works. So um, some of the challenges here, one of the things is that um, content services uses this, um, this approach to doing modular docs that involves doing various kinds of includes and stuff of the ASCII doc files. And this layout, the way they do things is completely incompatible with how Antora expects uh, things to be laid out. And Tora is a documentation build tool uh, that builds on ASCII Doctor is kind of the, the tool that does the conversion. And Tora is the one that does the orchestration of the site. Uh, you don't have to use Antora. There are other ways of doing things. And in fact, we have a build that's doing things that's not using Antora, but it is it's a popular choice. Um, it's a it's a very good default choice uh, if you don't have other reasons not to use it. And that's what Fedora uses. So a lot of people would like to be using it uh, for various good reasons. Um, however, we do have a, uh, a build system that's working. Um, alternatively, we could look at doing kind of a, a, uh, a pre-build kind of massaging of things to put it into a form that Antora likes. Um, that's entirely an option, and this is something that we can you know revisit as a community. Uh, but the build that's working right now is just using a, a, a kind of a custom uh, build system using ASCII Doctor. Um, one of the other challenges is um, integrating with the other docs that we have. So um, we have a docs.centos.org, um, and that has, uh, as I said before, contributor's guide um, and some older installation material. Um, and there is stuff that we will want to publish for CentOS that doesn't make sense uh, for Red Hat. Contributor's guide being a you know very big one, the, the contribution process to CentOS stream is not something that's really necessarily relevant as something that we would give to a RHEL customer, right? Um, and uh, there's uh, the SIGs, SIGs.CentOS.org, where the SIGs are able to put their documentation. Um, and uh, and then we have our wiki. The wiki is um, Moin Moin. The SIGs is, it's something, I don't know what it's using, but they're markdown. Okay, make docs and they're markdown source files. And docs.CentOS.org is, um, 
is also a markdown, but it's using middleman, I think. So we have like multiple build systems. Middle, isn't it? Or is it Jekyll? I think it's Jekyll. Okay. Uh, we have multiple build systems. Excellent. This is a problem. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, ideally, you know, you want people to be able to come to like one place. And maybe it's okay that like stuff is published in a few different places, but we just have one place that is. Um, that kind of aggregates links to all of them, basically. Um, uh, this is something that can be addressed by the community and we can figure out, but I, I figure um, um, more docs is, is better and we can figure out how to create a better organization around them. But uh, it's definitely something we should be considering. Um, it's also a potential barrier to, to contributions where people don't know, like, where the heck am I, you know, where am I supposed to go to contribute to this and do I have to learn? another system or whatever. So, um, and then another thing is that RHEL and CentOS Stream are not exactly the same thing. Um, first of all, they have different names. Uh, one is called RHEL and the other is called CentOS Stream. Uh, this is pretty easy. In, in very simple names, it's really easy. There's, there's parameters that you can put it in. So you write your ASCII doc files referencing, instead of saying RHEL, you reference this like product name parameter uh, and so we can change that out pretty easily. And the, the uh, preview builds that I showed you earlier are already doing that. Um, sometimes it gets a little bit trickier, like if we're referencing some other product or some other project, uh, and it, there's not like a one-to-one -one with a, a product and a upstream project. So for example, uh, like Red Hat Satellite is, is built on uh, Foreman, but it's really like it's, it's Foreman and Pulp and some opinionated choices of various components and stuff. And it may be that there are times in the docs where you might say Red Hat Satellite where you don't want to just replace it with Foreman because it's no longer a true statement about the, you know, it's, it's a statement about kind of the conglomeration that we have in that product. So uh, those are things that kind of have to look at, you know, have human eyeballs look at. Um, the content would be ahead of RHEL, but that's probably okay because CentOS Stream is a little bit ahead of RHEL, but it's something to be aware of that like, Maybe sometimes stuff is going in there that um, you know isn't isn't ready for a CentOS stream to be publishing yet. Um, I'm not terribly worried about that. Uh, there are a lot of places in the Red Hat documentation where they say Red Hat recommends. This is their like like here are the facts, right? And here's our recommendation. And the language is always Red Hat recommends and. I, I don't know that we want to say Red Hat recommends in, you know, CentOS stream community docs. I don't know if we take out those recommendations, if we turn them into CentOS recommendations. I'm not actually sure what the answer is on those. Yeah. CentOS recommends that you follow Red Hat's recommendation that you do it this way. <laughs> um, it's tricky. Um, there is well stuff that has to be completely conditionalized out. Um, so stuff that's talking about like subscription manager or something is is entirely irrelevant to CentOS. Uh, this is totally possible to do. Like there are conditional systems in the ASCII doc that we can use. Um, so it's not a technical hurdle, but it's again something that like as we go through these docs to publish them for CentOS, um, a human being needs to actually review them and figure out like, oh, this piece needs to be uh, put out. Um, and by the same token, there may be stuff that we want to add in, um, and we can use the same conditionally conditionalizing process to add stuff in that you know they would not want um, in the rel documentation. Um, and then the big thing is this has been like two or three people in content services that have put this together, and this is not like. Um, this is not their actual day job that they're evaluated on right at the end of the day for, you know, they have to deliver the product documentation to the customers first and foremost. And so if we can exhibit value in doing this stuff um, in the open, that's awesome. Um, but a lot of this, if we want to continue um, doing this and having CentOS documentation built from this stuff, we're going to have to have some community input to overcome some of these challenges uh, that I've talked about. The content services team can 
just do the work in in the open in that like in that GitLab repository that I showed you. So it's all there where we're able to do the work to adapt it to CentOS. Um, but the work to adapt it to CentOS is something that we're, we're probably going to need some community people to help out with. Um, and uh, uh, the other thing is, uh, for various reasons, they cannot take um, contributions from outside of Red Hat that uh, affect the RHEL documentation, um, which is, I don't know, I'm working on it. We're making steps. Um, but currently, they don't have a problem because they got a, in, they're making various guarantees about their documentation and they have to, um, they would have to run it through a review process. I don't know. Uh, but we can, of course, anything that affects um, just the CentOS documentation, doing the rebranding, conditionalizing, anything like that would be fine. Adding in any content that's conditionalized only to CentOS would be fine. I suspect if you sent a typo it would fix, they'd be okay with that. Um, and, and of course, they can take bug reports and stuff, but then they would want to be the ones actually uh, reviewing the content. Yeah, Karsten. Yeah. Yeah. So Carson points out it's it's a there's a, a there's a cultural difference, and you know a lot of our engineering teams are are used to doing things this way, um, uh, but the uh, documentation teams aren't necessarily always, and it's not always you know it's not necessarily the the people that I've been working with. It's you know they've got a whole management chain and, and people they have to talk to and reviews that they have to do. And, and I'm pretty sure stuff has to clear legal at some point. So, yeah. Yeah, Josh. engineers can be wrong. I'm not saying they're infallible. I'm just saying, like, yeah, for, uh, pardon you. And, um, <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, if you're changing, if you're making a contribution that changes the way a command would be run or uh, a statement on, like, what the functionality of something is, the docs are the thing that they're actually the engineer to verify. And that's what cats can help. I'm going to double down on what Josh just said. We, we have a couple of separate people that were exposing the main change to the box. Yeah, I just want to summarize on, on the mic that it's the, the technical writers are not engineers, they're not the subject matter experts, and they have to, any sort of change like this has to be verified through the engineers to ensure that they're saying something right. Yeah, Pat. Right, right. Yeah. And, and I just want to answer the, what somebody who was thinking of probably the radio can be talked to the doc said, well, why don't we all just get the, the writer and the engineer together on the same goal set and then we can first stop right there. So if you want to do some talking about that, but as somebody who's been thinking, not to think about the entire engineering organization and their interaction with uh, Git processes, I just want to think what the goal is that. But, and, and when we're talking about verification, all that stuff, these are just examples. And, and, it start, and it starts with what, what you are showing us here. Like, this is how 
how we go about that. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll put everything into five seconds for the camera that uh, there's also the translators to consider uh, and because uh, RHEL docs are translated in multiple languages and this is a very big step even though it's not you know all the way but it's uh, it's it's a it's a big step in what we're trying to do so um, oh that's all I had actually so uh, there is a CentOS docs mailing list uh, and that's a good place to just jump in and you can Pop in if you just give an introduction to yourself and say you're interested in stuff. Or if you don't want to go straight to a mailing list, uh, you can always email me, seanm at redhat.com, or like uh, Twitter, I guess, uh, at seanm. That's S H A U N M. Um, getting confused. I don't like Twitter, but it's still the easiest place to publicly uh, interface with people. So uh, that's it. Any more questions? I guess I'll actually, I have the live stream. Anything else? Great, then we have uh, eight minutes until the next talk. So get some coffee and see you then.